And then I'll usually leave, there we go. I'll leave this end loose just until I see what I have down here to deal with. We Sometimes learned that. you have to go up. Yeah. We learned that the exactly. hard way. The truth of the matter is when I work with the guys and everybody's working together for the same goal, it's actually really good. Uh, they do a phenomenal job. Darren is actually uh, very good at what he does when he's doing it. I also have to admit that he's very good at torturing people when that's what he's doing. And when he's picking at you and needling at you and driving you crazy, pushing your buttons, doing everything he can to crack you, I think the easiest thing for me to do is just to cut the rat loose to chase his cheese. Hopefully it's spoiled by the time he gets to it. I don't care. So I told Darren, you know what? This is your week. You go do whatever it is you want, okay? You do everything. Everything in the show, everything that's happening in this episode. Go torture everybody, run around. I couldn't care less. I got cars to work on. That's what I'm going to go do. You're going to stay clear out of everything? I'll stay out of everything. We'll do whatever you want to do. Okay, where's the duct tape? We Knock yourself out, whatever you want to do. Put on your mouth. Really, it's all my show? You better get going on it. This means I'm the king. It's my week to sit up on the throne here at Graveyard Cars. Do things like I think they should be done, and don't worry about what Mark thinks or what's happened in the past. Oh, that's a mistake. The unburied dead are coming back to life. Coming back to life. My name's Mark Warman. I'm Darren Kirkpatrick. And we get paid to bring dead cars back to life. We work with my best friend Royal and my son-in-law Josh. We search far and wide to find how a car was built, where it spent its life, and how it died. After that, we bring it back to look exactly the way it did on the day it was born if we don't kill each other. No, no, that, not... oh, 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 oh. After driving the CUDA all the way over to Eugene to the Dipper, uh, there was a slight mix up. Because of the CUDA getting buried out in the truck loading dock, it set us behind a few days. Well, apparently, we lost our slot in getting it dipped. So now we're back three or four weeks at the very least. So we just brought that car back. Meanwhile, I've still got the 70 Roadrunner that I got a phone call from the owner two days ago says he wants it by Christmas Day. That's only a few weeks away. So we're working hard on putting the interior together on it, tail lights, exterior trim and ornamentation. Plus, we still have to get it running and driving, all in just a matter of a couple of weeks. Maybe if that wasn't enough, I also have the 71 Charger that was supposed to be done by Halloween, which was two months ago, and back to the owner in Canada on that. So yeah, I got my hands full. I'm gonna turn you loose for you can work freely. Hey Mark, what do I do? What do I do? What do you want me to do? Why are we here today? I got a toilet that's broken. He comes in the other day and something's happened to his toilet out there, out in Marcola land. Who knows what it is? Something happened to the toilet, so it was no good. It wasn't working. So he goes down to the local hardware store and he buys another toilet. Then I get educated on how toilets work. I'm doing you. This is what I get. I'm trying to run a show and I got you running around talking about a broken toilet. It's like a little pin one or something. I just want to know what you want me to do. What do you want me to do? Well, I want you to sit down first off. Okay. okay. I want All you right. to. Sure. Get a hold of Hardwood. Steve Hardwood is a gentleman we've known for quite some time. He's also a Mopar enthusiast who lives south of us here that has a bunch of cars he's trying to sell us and, and or some parts. So you so want me to follow up on the Barracuda parts. and the Challenger? Yeah, and also I'll, ch I'll, I'll, I'll see this is how easy this is? This is great. And it's great. See this is look, great. See how much better Be it is surprised when, how 47 minutes you'll never get back in your life. See how much better it is though when I'm doing it and people aren't fighting and stuff? I got today's already lined out. <sighs> it's all lined out. Today's lined out. It's going to be hard to talk with your teeth missing. Okay. You have reached a number that is no longer in service. <laughs> Check the number and try again. We've been trying to find a good number for Steve, but uh, unable to get a good number. They've all been disconnected or wrong numbers or something. Their little book. I don't know. Well, it seems like you'd have been a little bit better prepared for this. Is it a, all right? You want to do it today? I'll send your calling. You want to do it? Maybe Dude, set this up in a few days. You're the one that wants to do this today. No, I didn't mention hardwood. You did. You just said you want. Are you insane? You wanted me to look up the Barracuda. You just asked me but to it do was it. Your idea no, you I'm asked cool. me just are now. You off or on? You need it. You know what? You need to check into some kind of loony bin. Wow. 
I want to buy those cars. I want to buy those cars. Those are on my list. That's on my list. It's my week. It's my week. We're going to buy those cars. We're going to buy those cars. Okay. Okay. Fine. I make the phone calls. Nobody answers. I'm sorry. Are we shaking makeup today? This tape. Get away no, no, really. with your foot. You no, I'm not. Number that is no longer in yeah. Yeah. Number and try again. He has no preparation at all. Nothing. Oh, God. Can you sit down, please? I'm just asking you nice. Yeah, I try to be nice. But you don't know how how difficult it is to work with you. I don't think you know. So if you could just let me make this phone call. I'm easy to get along with. Yes, you are. Very easy to get along with. Why do people drink Diet Coke and then go eat 14 hamburgers? So I make maybe two dozen or three dozen unanswered telephone calls to the guy who's selling some cars that we're very interested in buying, which is on his list to do that day. And since we're unable to get hold of the guy, unable to drive down and check out the cars, what would the most natural selection be to do next? Christmas tree shopping. You heard that sound before? Hey, Josh. What do you need to go get a Christmas tree? <laughs> to get a Christmas tree. We need to go get a Christmas tree, me and you. Like right now. Is this what Mark said or what's what's the deal? No, this is what I say. Me and Mark had a discussion, and this is my week to run the shop, run graveyard cars. So what I say this week basically goes. So I'm just asking you to come along with me and get a Christmas tree. Oh, it's man. more important than this right now. This is you've had all year to work on this this Roadrunner windshield wiper motor. I know. I just don't want to get in trouble for you, it. You're not going to get in trouble you know. because this week it's about me, not Mark. <laughs> oh, man. No, it's about me this week. I... Okay? <laughs> Grab your coat. Cool. Let's do it. Christmas tree trip was a lot of fun. That's probably a noble right there, I'd say. That's a pretty one, huh? Yeah, it is. It was just a lot of fun to get out of the shop and just come up and try to find a tree and one that we both agreed on, and that was a lot of fun. How about Ald that one? Aldi Munzel and Marcola, people, if you're looking for a nice tree, he's got plenty of them. Let's walk down here, okay? Come on down, everybody. My name's Darren Kirkpatrick. Ga, 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 ga. A short and fat like Mark. <laughs> fat and uh, vertically challenged. Vertically challenged. Look at your poor dog. Oh, she's good. She's fine. Okay, Maya. Yeah. We like Maya. If she could talk, what would she say? She says, I'm, I'm cold <laughs> and I'm wet. Now this has got to be a good thing. And thing. I'm going to catch pneumonia. Okay. We're just standing here. And right. I picked well, out how many trees now? Well, we want to pick out a fur probably, right? We want that fur. Okay. Douglas fur. That's a pretty good one. This pretty. one is a good one. Oh, wow, yeah, it is. You, you make the choice. Okay. This is a Douglas fur, too. Look at it from all sides. What do you think? Want that one? Yep. Okay, buddy. I'll let you cut it, okay? <laughs> it's going to fall on you. Here it comes. Oh, my God, Darren, look out. Boy, you're good in here. I'll clear this off. Okay. Christmas just brings out the best in us, doesn't it? Yep. Hope it brings out the best in Mark, right? <laughs> yeah. Josh picked out a really nice tree. Yep. Yeah, look at the Douglas fir. Mm -hmm. I love the tree that Darren and I picked out. Um, didn't have to hear him kind of bash me for picking the wrong one. We picked the right one, so it's cool. Can somebody call the city and find out if we can get a parade for Darren? Ooh, nice. Oh, you hear that? Didn't even hurt. You're gonna kill somebody. It's like a death trap. He's crazy. Well, I found myself all alone today. Not because I ran them all off, but because it's the first snow of the year. So around here, folks don't know how to drive real well on it. 
I took off from my house at 7.30 this morning in a front engine rear wheel drive Dodge Magnum and got to work in 15 minutes. Dumb Dumber and Dumbest that are supposed to be here helping me on the Roadrunner didn't show up at all. One of them drives a front wheel drive, the other two drive four wheel drives. They didn't even make it in today, which is a blessing because now maybe I can get some work done. There are a few companies, I, want, I wanted to take a few minutes and just kind of acclimate everybody with uh, one of my pet peeves at the car shows and that is uh, the reproduction wiring harnesses that are available. Even the ones that I choose, which I think are the very, very best, still have discrepancies from an original wiring harness. So if you were to go to an original equipment car show, like Chrysler's a Carlisle, you would be knocked down judge point wise for having a reproduction wiring harness if it wasn't undetectable. And none of them that I've seen so far are undetectable. This is the original forward lamp harness here out of the 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner. And this is the replica one that I bought, the only one that I think is the best on the market. Looking at the plug-ins for the voltage regulator, so the one in my right hand is the reproduction, the one in my left hand is original. You can notice considerable differences between the two. One is this is a soft rubber outer casing on it. It's a smooth body. The original one has this hard shell on it that you'll see ribs raised ribs that you don't see here. In fact, the entire shape is considerably different. This part and the inner part look to be the same. It's this outer shell that's the difference. So oftentimes what I will do is come on the bottom of it where you can't see it and make a slice in it and take this outer piece off of it, take this off, put it over the outside so the appearance is the same. The only differences are this nut it's hard to get this exact same nut. The difference is the appearance of the outside of them. If you look at the two, this is the original one here. This is the reproduction one here. This one is both a taller nut as well as a fatter nut from the thread to the outer part and has a thicker appearance to it. This one did not come with a washer on it, so what I do is I use the original star-shaped washer from the original one. They do reproduce these washers, but again, they're not identical either. So if you have an original, keep it. This washer will be cleaned up, and it also had a yellow zinc chromate look to it, so it'll get re-zinked. This will get wire wheeled since it had a natural finish and a satin clear on it, and it will end up on this as a detailed item. The only other difference is, look very carefully at this bolt that holds one of the relay wires in place. There's no cross in it, such as you see in this one. You get to the big shows, these guys spend years building these cars and making them perfect. The retainer here and the bolt here are the originals. I'll clean them up, do the correct plating on them, and install them on this new solenoid. So at a glance, once this is installed in the car, you would have a difficult time seeing the difference. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Hey Darren, could you please not play the game right now? I really need to get hold of you. Thank you. In the beginning, I just thought Darren was a little bit neurotic, honestly. Uh, it wasn't until it, he started playing the game, we call it the game around the shop, a little bit more frequently that you realize it actually is some type of a non-winnable game, like tic-tac-toe. I'll keep calling. I'll call him a thousand times. I don't care if his cell phone explodes. He doesn't even answer the phone. In, in a lot of situations, part of the game is everybody's getting along fine on Thursday. We're happy. We go out to dinner. Everything's fine. Friday, he quits returning phone calls. Won't answer the phone. Doesn't care how many times you call. Doesn't care what the message is that you leave at his house. No matter how important it is, he's not answering the phone. Eight, one is not That's exactly why I can't get anything done. Exactly why. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic... He won't answer the phone. He plays the game. Why? There's the key. Once you figure out the why, 
all the rest of it will begin to make sense. But the problem is nobody, nobody has ever been able to figure out why. <sighs> Me and my good friend Maya are on our way to the, see my chiropractor, Jerry Evans, or Eugene. He's way too cool to answer any of my hundreds of phone calls, uh, too cool to answer any of my questions, all part of the game but not too cool to grab everybody who works in the film department and take him over to watch him go to the chiropractor and get an adjustment. Also, he can stand underneath the sign like a kid who just caught his first fish and pointing at it. The door's a little sticky, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Hi, Melanie, how are you? Hi. Not very busy. You're not very busy. No, not right now. Well, the rooms are full. Do you know who it is if I just put my initials on here or not? No, I don't remember you. What's your name again? Darren Kirkpatrick. Okay. All right, so you're going to have to wait 100 years no, for him? The next round is yours. Okay. <laughs> Best thing about going to the chiropractor? Interferential therapy basically shocks the person. It creates endorphins, numbs the pain, and helps decrease inflammation. If I could bring Mark in and hook him up to this, wouldn't that be fun? And just start it at the highest, whatever the highest is. Strap him down and turn it up full bore and see what he does. Of course, it's all for therapy. I mean, we want to help him. Okay. Normally he screams, I think, because you're here. He's uh, putting on his best behavior. But... <laughs> I got a friend that tortures people. He doesn't get paid for it, but he tortures everyone. Really? Yeah, his name is Mark. Yeah. It's kind of rude, isn't it? Yeah, he's very rude, actually. Okay, Let's see if we can get this. You have to relax now. Drop your head down there. Ooh, nice. Oh, you hear that? Didn't even hurt. I heard that in the next room. Didn't even hurt. Normally he uh, he's really difficult. But today it was very cooperative, so I don't know what's gotten into him. I've been calling him steady all day long. Call after call after call after call after call. Nothing voicemail, voicemail, voicemail. And, and you know what? Tomorrow when he shows up, I'm not even gonna acknowledge that I've even tried to call. Uh, he said, why'd you try calling me? I said, I, I didn't, I don't know. Maybe the phone did it. I don't care if it's his week. You're gonna kill somebody. Looks better if a dash would go into my car instead of this one. You fight with everyone. I don't fight with anybody you but you. With... It's like a death trap. He's crazy. Today we're going to assemble the dash for the 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner. All of 68 and through December of 69, Chrysler had a problem. This was, this was an erroneous label that they had put on the temperature gauges, so it read wrong. They corrected it in December of 69, and so since my Roadrunner was a 70, it should have that correct one. If you had a 68 or an early 69 model with the same dash, you would have used the incorrect one to be fully correct. I'm surprised you guys didn't know that. Well, it must be interesting trying to get this on there, huh? Darren has one job to do. Put six nuts on the back of a, of a dash pad. That's all he's got to do. That's all he's got to do. And he can't do that. Reach. I got it. What was that? 
Oh, the washer fell off. Thank you. Here's the problem with these glasses. If anybody's ever bought a pair of glasses from Walmart or one of the craft stores, the dollar stores, this is what you get. I spent an hour making these straight. An hour. And now I look like some derelict on the side of the road eating bags of potato chips. Look at that. It doesn't matter. You can take them off. It's okay. You're going on straight. You're going on straight. And that's what you get. We're used to you looking like that. Crap. Garbage. Well, I've been getting a ton of pressure from everybody saying that I've been mean to Darren and Well you have. The counseling is not really No, but helping. the point is and I and I think that I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna just quit taking your bait because what he does, he'll come at me with foolishness when the cameras aren't rolling. This is ridiculous. Like when everybody's gone, he'll he'll needle me, jam me three or four times and then I'll take the bait, but I take it on camera. So everybody writes in, gosh, I don't know why you say Darren's so mean. He's so sweet, he's such a nice guy. Well he's not. He's not. Well, we've got to do something here, folks. I'm very sweet. That's what everybody sees, the real sweet me on TV. So you are not being so sweet. Okay. Now what I did here, the socket was too deep, so the nut couldn't get on the threads. So I put a little piece of plastic in the bottom of the socket to keep the nut out further so I could get it on the studs for the dash bed. To make you look distinguished. That'll work. You look stupid. Oh, I look stupid? You know what? I do. I look stupid, and Darren looks actually really good. So that's fine. Well, those glasses make you look hideous. I can't oh, see for pity sakes. Them. I can't see without them. Repeat that back. Mark can't see without them. Mark can't see without them. That's why Mark puts them on. And I asked for a nice pair. I didn't ask for these. You still look stupid. <laughs> I got work to do. Just shut up. Let's rotate this up. Okay, buddy, go for it. Look how it fits so wonderful. Here, hold that for me for a second. I thought you didn't need me for anything. Why don't you just use a screwdriver? Because you lost it. You lost it. What is wrong? That's with why. You? What's wrong? You're with what's you? wrong with me. You fight with everyone. I don't fight with anybody you but fight you. Fight with Royal. You fight with Chuck. You fight with me. You fight with Josh. You fight with the cameraman. Mark, just lighten up, would you? You see? See what I you tell you. You know what? If you guys want to lose everything and smash it and break it, I wish you would. Oh God. <laughs> Each of these contain a set of the original screws that are duplicates. So you don't have to use the old rusty ones anymore. You don't have you don't have to go out and paint them black again. If they're black, they're in this kit. So here's the chart that tells you. Number one are sill plate molding screws. Number two, windshield molding screws upper. Number three, coat hooks. So what we're looking for here are dash screws. This is what makes a big difference in restoring cars a little stuff like this. People always put some mismatched screws in there. The plating on them's not very good. It just makes a big difference. Before I put my gauges in, I always want to make sure they work because that's a lot of work if it's in the car. If you were the other kids in the neighborhood that had 64 packs of crayon, that's about where your gas gauge would ride. That's Royal's gas gauge, Darren's, Darren's gas gauge. Oh, oh, Daddy, I'm low on gas. Can I get some money? Sure, son. There's Darren's dad. No, I didn't. There's, There's your dad. Give you a bunch of gasoline. <laughs> Ninety percent of your electrical problems are from just bad connections. So when you replace the dash, if you take these and unplug them and plug it back in a couple of times, it'll create a new connection. Good job of missing a couple of those screws. Well, I didn't do it. Well, why are you making some great big glory thing? Should we have a parade for you? Is that all you want? Is a parade? Animals can somebody parade, call the city parade. and find out if we can get a parade for Darren? Because he found two parade. screws missing. Animals on parade. parade. Okay, anyway. Animals on parade. There it is. Darren, you can take the credit for it. I, I didn't do it. Mark did all the detail work. Well, pretty much assembled it. I just came along and found the faults of both of them and fixed them. Before? After. This is sort of the same. You know, Mark is Why is yours like this? Are you like a pair of Walmart Mark glasses? is sort of like... Hold the thing level. You know, this, these match us as individuals. That's sort of Mark is before, I'm sort of the after. You know what I'm saying? Just trying to show them what they look like. They look nice, buddy. I don't care if it's his week. 
you're gonna kill somebody. Look better if it dashes going in my car instead of this one. D Day, when it drives the car, it's D's day today. My day. Uh, my name is Will Scott. I've been painting with Mark since 1997, since I graduated high school. Will's worked for me on and off for about 12 years. I taught him how to do painting. Uh, basically everything that he knows now is something I've taught him. I was taught a little bit by Mark, but most of it I just picked up on my own. I was going so fast to get this car done, I overlooked the fact that the insides of the door jams had to be black. Today we're going to be installing the taillights, the interior and exterior ornamentation on the 70 Roadrunner. I want to buff the taillights so you can put the taillight assemblies together okay. and in the car. That's good fun stuff, right? Speaking about buff, <sighs> I am. Yeah. Josh, did you really acid these? Acid what? The taillights? Yeah. Acid stopped working, I guess. You're telling me that these have been acid washed. These. Yes. These. Yes, I swear to God. Which I can walk up to right here and go like that, and it rubs the dirt right off. Now I'm going to take them in and I'm going to wash these with acid. And I'm going to dry them off and I'm going to show you that they look exactly brand new. Because I believe that Josh went in and he attempted to wash these with muriatic acid. Can anybody see that? Do those look clean with muriatic acid? The tail light lenses are dusty because they've been sitting on the table for the past week. Things get dusty in the shop because there's, there's Bondo dust constantly flying. The dust does not settle. You walk on the floor in here and it's kicking dust everywhere. Why would I lie about it? I haven't got a clue why you'd lie about it. You know what's interesting about that? When they asked Ted Bundy a bunch of questions, he answered them all with the right answers, but they were lies but because he was a sociopath. I think you're a sociopath for misconstruing me. Okay, so when I take this acid, and somebody's gonna follow me, and I wash them, and they come back and they're clean, the acid worked today, but didn't work yesterday. It's magic acid. Yeah, no, 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 no. It was two days ago, two days ago. I took them and I put them in the sink and I poured neurotic acid on them, just like you wanted. But apparently I didn't do it the right way. But I did it, and I'm not lying. <laughs> soft side of this, not the hard side of it. But when you're done with this, I guarantee you, you know that thing's been clean with acid. Mark's going crazy because he's always trying to prove somebody wrong to make himself look better. But, you know, it's, he's gotta be the king, so, I mean, he's gonna come back and he's gonna be, oh, looky here, looky here. Oh, it worked. But you know what I'm gonna say? Yeah, it, it did the same exact thing whenever I poured acid all over it, too. Did you use the acid straight? Yes. You did. Straight acid, yes. Did you use this acid? That's the only acid we have okay. here in the shop. You didn't use this acid. It's, no. No, okay, okay. No. You have to go that far to put somebody up on the stand and prove a point? I don't know. I don't know. You feel better? Yes, I do. That always makes me feel better. Complaining about Mark. Yeah. Maybe work on my car all day. Mark, hello. Here's my simple plan. No, no, there's no. He's too promised. It's 3 o'clock. He well, said all day. He said 8 o'clock. We are at 8 o'clock. I was here at 8.15. Okay? No, no, I just want to ask. What do you want to do to that? Drive it. Honestly. Drive it. You want to drive your car? Yeah. You can't even do it with a straight face. How are you going to drive a car with no brakes? I don't have no, time to hook right. up the brakes. There's no fuel Forward. tank in it. 
Reverse. There's no doors. Forward, reverse, just a couple. Move back and forth a little bit. I don't care if it's his week. Okay, I still have a responsibility out there in the shop. We could just tighten this back up and go to work on the other car. It doesn't have to go in we there will today. Work on the other car. It and it does have, have to go in today. No, it doesn't have to go in today. I think I'm having a heart attack. And nobody's calling 911 either. I want you to go around to the... Oh boy, I thought you were gonna work on my car, Mark. Hello? We will work on it, buddy. When? Next year? I've gotta put Next the dash in the car. I just We've got a dash in sure. our hands. Well, you hey, you've got to go inside. You gotta, that's real, real nice. Look better if a dash was going to my car instead of this one. Darren, once again, without thinking of the customer or the shop or the team, is obsessed with the idea of getting his car running and driving. Which is crazy considering it has no parts on it. There's no brakes, there's no gas tank, there's no doors, there's no hood, no windshield. There's no ignition switch. There's not even going to be a throttle. I'm going to set the idle up really high and you're driving it. Let's stop what we're doing nice. for Princess, Thank you. and let's go get his car running. So what is your intention exactly? I'd like to drive my car. You want to drive your car? It's millennial. Your starter is shot full. That's what happens with these rebuilds after they sit. How long did it work on my car? About seven or eight seconds the full day. really good actually. D-Day, we're gonna drive the car, it's D's day today. My day. One of these days I'm gonna turn him upside down and shake the change out of his pockets. This is already a circus act. Oh boy, thanks Mark. We didn't get to work on it all day Saturday, as promised, and nothing's been done. Thank you very much, Mark. <laughs> wow. Promises, promises, promises. And what got done? Nothing. He blames it on me. Well, guess what? I'll just work on it myself. he got this side tight. So I'm going to believe him. We should go start this thing up. We got a throttle return spring on it, which is good. So the throttle's not going to stick on us when we start it. We want to make sure it's in neutral when we start it. We don't want this thing jumping across the shop. What we're trying to do is hook up the starter wires, which were hooked up before, but mysteriously, you know, they must they grew legs and walked out of the shop. Darren went out to work on his car today and get it running. He noticed that the positive battery cable was gone. Immediately, he went into some kind of tirade and he started stewing because he thinks that I'm the guy that took it. Jeez, thanks a lot, Mark. See what he costs me all the time? Automatically assuming it was me. Well, you know, it's not always me. I mean, this time it was me, but it's not always me. I would get away with the murder because everyone and everyone that knows Mark has motive why they want to take him out. Goes into a tirade begin stewing and festering. So he called two or three hours worth of work, plus all the problems, the grief, the anger. You know, I'm gonna need counseling for this. I'm going to need counseling for what Mark has done to me. And I don't know if it can help me or not. There is no I in team, it's T-E-A-M. Cursing around the shop, telling everybody all the woes and all the times I've took parts off his car. Oh no, Mr. Big Shot, who thinks he can get away with everything in the world. He goes out to the parking lot, without even talking to me to be sure if it was me or not. Treat people horrible, call them names, pick on them, threaten to beat them up. Nah, it's all kind of come to an end. Gets in his little comfort zone in here. He feels like he's safe. Like a dog in the back of their own turf is real tough. But out here, he's not going to be so tough. I can guarantee it. Waiting like a lion waiting for its prey to show up. And Mark Borman does not have an eye in it. It should be team. Even the dog in there, they said a minute ago, doesn't like Mark. And that's why the dog growls at people, because of what Mark has done to it. Like people have said, I should be running the show. It should be my show. And he should do what I say. He's riding around in his car with the heater on, watching TV in his car. He watches TV in his car. Oh, oh speaking of the devil. Hey, Mark. 
Mark, how you doing? Hey, no, 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 why don't you sit out Santa size, man? They don't need to hear all this, do they? I don't know, what is it? I got a couple bones to pick with you. I'm a little bit upset with you. Really, very upset with you. Oh, what? Well, about the starter situation out here. Mark was telling the starter was bad, but Mark was wrong, the starter was okay. The way Mark had a starter hooked up is what was wrong. I don't understand. Well, so the you don't so understand. you're upset because the nut and the little nut, the big nut and the little nut were on the starter, but the wire wasn't underneath them? No, no, no. You took the wire off. I took the wire, borrowed the wire months ago for a car that had to go. Yeah. And then I replaced it. Did you put it back on the car? No, I didn't take Why? it off. Sure. Did you get your car running? No. Does it turn over? Don't know yet. I haven't got that far. Well, why don't you, instead of chewing me out for something I didn't even do, why, didn't why don't you, you put in there work together? We wouldn't have went through all this. Because you took it apart. I didn't tell. I wouldn't take parts off my own car. Well, I did not you. physically take that battery cable. One of your employees. Probably. Did. I'm smarter than you. I got work to do. No, you got cool. the wrong person running the shop, Mark. I don't think he really understands all the grief he causes, not only myself, but the people here. What about the distributor, too? You, the distributor you have wasn't right for this it car. Doesn't matter. It's, it's supposed to be a press light dual point distributor. Does that look like a press light dual point distributor? The car, in the car with the the, I gave you the distributor the first time. No, no, you didn't. Oh, I most certainly did. I walked over no, to Connect, you so you probably fabricated no, something no, I stole I didn't earlier. The, I didn't get the one from Every the time Darren wants parts for his car, every time he wants parts for a car, he, Mark, he sits back and thinks, Mark, Mark. Gosh, I should. Hey, Mark. Oh, oh I, I know what it. I'll do. Mark's too busy to remember anything. Oh, this is great. Bye, buddy. Um, remember that time you stole you. my engine? It's got oil, it's got water. We hooked up some gas to it via a gas can in the back. As soon as you don't have no gas tank, don't ask me what happened to my gas tank, okay? Got the hose in there. Yeah, it's nice and wet. It's not in gear, as you can see, as it rolls. Oh, hello. Ooh, it's going to run. Okay, so what are you ready to do here? Ready to start it. Is it going to run? That's a question. Did you primer it or not? Yes. Don't sound too good. What is that? I asked you to hook the coil up, you freak. You don't hook it to a coil wire. It wasn't hooked up. It was just sitting there. What's wrong? You're a miracle. It goes on the positive side of the coil. a little bit of gas right there? Yeah, it does look like a sleep. Well, don't hook it up and spark it. You're going to kill somebody. It's going to be a big deal. A little bit of gas there, dude. See, now we got fire. Sounds good, huh? I don't think that choke should be slammed shut. Down in there, will it? Well, that's gonna be good on film. So, what do you think? Sound pretty good? Yeah, I'm gonna take it outside. It's like a death trap. He's crazy. He wants to drive this thing. There's no brakes in it. There's no ignition. No window, no doors, no fenders, no hood, no cooling system. D-Day is going to drive the car. It's D's day today. My day. All I got to do is finish tightening Nobody the seat bolts, it, huh? and then you can drive it. All you gotta do is finish tightening the seat bolts. Start it up. Is that our safety feature? What's wrong? It's crazy. Darren's car has no brakes on it. <laughs> the only way to stop it is to disconnect the positive wire going over to the coil and hope that the compression of the engine stops it before he runs somebody over or hurts himself. When you start going and you say, ooh, my goodness, I should stop now before I get hurt or hurt somebody else, you're gonna disconnect it. Car from inside here. Sort of go, uh, uh, uh. Well, yeah, and then just leave the clutch out and the compression will slow it down. So I'm going to leave them right there in the driver's area. Okay. Well, you guys are going to be here in case something bad happens, right? With something, you know what I mean? Just hop in, put it in neutral. I'll start it no, up. No, no. I mean, you guys are going to not just going to stand back if something happens, right? 
Boy, these are uncomfortable. So make sure, so make sure you're in neutral. Why'd you do that? Just want to make sure it works. It's a test. I don't want to do something crazy here, okay? All right, buddy. It's all right. Just crank it over again. I want to make sure. Now I don't want to start. I'd like to smash your face in. It's difficult enough to do your foolishness without you disconnecting it and killing the motor. The battery's weak. This is already a circus act. Is there anything else we want to add to this? Would you like to juggle the gas tank on the roof? Beep, beep, beep. Okay, put it in gear and let the clutch out real slow. And remember, if it goes too fast, just pull that wire loose. The clutch went to the floor. Bang, the clutch pedal hits the floor. I didn't appreciate that at all. I didn't know if something had come loose or what. Till we looked down, parts missing. Where's the relay rod that goes from the uh, Z bar to the throw out port? Well, it's on there. It's not on there. The whole clutch was all together, everything was working. Well, you remember I used that for the TA, right? This is supposed to be my show. You put it back, though. I bought you all the pieces. You told me you put it back, right? One of these days, I'm going to turn him upside down and shake the change out of his pockets. Thank you, Mark. Here you go. This is part of the game we always play, isn't it? Right, Mr. Cameraman? Ah! ah stop it! <laughs> <laughs> Don't rough me up now. Gosh. All right, I think we had a pretty good week, all in all. I think we had a great week. I think we had a really good week, other, even in spite of the fact that you bogarted the camera and the microphone for the entire week. Paid extra for that. You're going to find that nobody wants to watch you go to the chiropractor, but that's okay. It was your show. We got a lot of work done on the Roadrunner. Put the tail lights in it, mm -hmm. rear garnish moldings, back to interior trim. Let's see what else we get done this week. The Plymouth name tags on the rear. You put the Plymouth name plates on the car, crooked. That's so I'll fix those this weekend. For weekend. factory holes. Well, yeah, but the pieces that you're putting on are aftermarket, and that's why they're a little crooked. And that's why I said you had to hog that hole a little bit so you can make that little bit of fine adjustment in it. We'll do it. Yeah, so just food for thought down the road. Anyway, I got his car running for him. <laughs> and it ran pretty good. Ran um, good. Didn't drive it. Didn't get a chance to drive it. No, we have a small, small setback. You know, I don't want you spinning that around like that's my fault either. The missing, the missing uh, adjustment rod. Yeah. Yeah, I took it, but I gave it back to you. No. I did give it no, back to you, really and you lost it, it again. No. You lose everything. Five minutes ago, you bought a V8 juice from Dairy Mart. Three minutes after that, you were looking for it all over. Have you found it yet? Yeah. Finished, oh, you did. Finished it all. Where was it? Don't even remember. <laughs>